Understanding how to acquire and manipulate clinically valuable 3D images is based on selecting correct probe orientation and fully comprehending the principles of 3D volume generation. Picking the correct probe position, probe orientation, and 3D acquisition mode will be the subject of this three-part series. Our 3D training laboratory uses a 3D model, a 3D target phantom, a synthetic ECG, a Philips IE33 matrix ultrasound machine, a 3D X5-1 TTE probe, and a Hartworks TEE simulator to train our attendees. This model represents a typical 3D image acquisition volume. The model demonstrates the primary 2D reference plane, also referred to as the lateral plane, in green. The secondary plane, also referred to as the elevation plane, is demonstrated in pink. The vertex of both planes, also seen as the peak of the pyramid, corresponds to the location of either a TEE or a TTE probe. All TTE probes have either a colored marker as seen here or a tactile marker as seen here. These markers uniquely identify one specific side of the reference plane. The ultrasound machine will also have a marker on the 2D ultrasound display as seen here. This marker on the display corresponds to the marker on the TTE probe. This blue P marker is used by Philips to denote the side of the displayed plane which corresponds to the marker side of the TTE probe. However, the same marker is used in certain modes of TEE acquisition to distinguish one side of the omniplane from the other. Again, in TEE acquisition, the displayed plane will also have a marker which is equivalent to an imaginary marker on the TEE omniplane. Although the TEE probe has no probe marker, the TEE plane can be thought of as having a virtual marker, which corresponds to the left side of the omniplane at zero degrees when viewed from the perspective of the esophagus. This is demonstrated here on the simulator. The mouse pointer is the virtual location of the imaginary marker. This side of the omniplane will always correspond to the blue P marker on the machine display monitor. This will be true regardless of the position of the omniplane, whether it be at 0, 60, 90, 120, or 180 degrees. This will always hold true. Note that the blue plane marker will always appear on the monitor on the right side of the monitor screen. The default position of the secondary plane is always 90 degrees clockwise to the primary plane when viewed from the perspective of the probe. In other words, the secondary plane can be thought of as derived from rotating the primary plane 90 degrees clockwise. With TEE, the clockwise rotation is from the perspective of the viewer sitting in the esophagus and looking forward into the heart. With TTE, in an analogous manner, the 90 degree clockwise rotation of the primary plane to create the secondary plane is from the perspective of the operator sitting in the position of the probe's cord looking forward into the heart. With either 3D TEE or TTE, probe rotation is performed automatically in any of the 3D modes including X-plane. The clockwise rotation is a virtual rotation automatically performed by the machine in concert with the 3D probe. The secondary plane also has a marker. On both the TEE and TTE probe, this is a virtual or imagined marker. In both cases, it is in an imaginary position 
which is located where it would come to lie if the primary plane and marker were rotated 90 degrees clockwise. Here we see the preserved relationship of the blue P marker as the green plane is effectively rotated 90 degrees clockwise to create the pink plane. While the green primary plane is always displayed on the left side of the viewing screen, the pink secondary plane is always displayed on the right side of the viewing screen. As with the primary or reference plane, the default location of the blue P marker for the secondary plane is on the right side of the displayed 2D slice. The reference and secondary planes can be displayed when using X-Plane, Live 3D, Zoom 3D, or Full Volume 3D. While they are not displayed by default in Live 3D, they can be brought up using the Image Select button on the left touch control panel and selecting the three or four image display button as shown here. In all cases the primary plane will be displayed on the left screen and the secondary plane will be displayed on the right screen. With X-Plane and 3D Zoom the blue P marker will be displayed in both the reference and the secondary plane on the left and right screen respectively. However, the marker will not be displayed in the other 3D modes which include Live 3D and Full Volume 3D. That said, it should be understood that if they were displayed, they would appear on the right side of each plane just as they are displayed in X-Plane or 3D Zoom. It is important to specifically understand how the 3D default view is presented. The 3D volume default view is known as the Home View and can always be recalled by pressing the Home View button on the right touch panel. In full volume mode, the pyramid is automatically cropped one halfway into the screen to expose the underlying green plane. However, once home view is pressed, only the face of the pyramid can be seen. In the model, the home view is the view displayed when the yellow face of the pyramid of data is presented on FOSS on the viewing screen. Subsequently, the pyramid can be manipulated on screen about any axis, but the home is always the first view the machine displays after data acquisition. Note that in the uncropped or uncut version of the 3D volume, the green reference plane and pink secondary plane cannot be seen because they are buried in the pyramid of data. Only one face of the pyramid is displayed, the yellow face, and that face is facing the viewer. In part two, we will use all these concepts to orient ourselves within the displayed data volumes for the live 3D, 3D zoom, and 3D full volume modes.